All right, so late last year, I switched over to using the iPhone 15 Pro for my in-depth review. And whilst the experience wasn't perfect, I was also kinda alarmed at just how much I enjoyed using it. I mean, I am a true Android enthusiast, and yet it was the closest I'd ever come to wanting to switch to an iPhone full time. Now, if you follow the channel, then you'll know that I obviously ended up switching back to using Android following the review, but given it's now been six months since the launch of the iPhone 15 Pro, I thought that it'd be fun to switch back to it for a few weeks to try and get a really good grasp on what I think are the most important changes Apple would need to make before I did ultimately decide to switch over full time. In fact, I've come up with seven features or changes in order of the least to the most important that I'd love Apple to address. So with that being said, let's dive in. And to start things off, we have a feature that is probably not what I'd call a deal breaker for me, but one that I'd still love for Apple to implement like Android does, which is app sideloading. Funnily enough, this is actually a feature that is supposedly already in the works, but if and when it does ship, it looks like it's gonna be incredibly restricted and not at all how I'd like it to be implemented. Now for the uninitiated, sideloading is essentially the act of installing some sort of software or application obtained from a third party source, i.e. not the Apple App Store on an iPhone or the Google Play Store on an Android. And I can't even begin to count how many apps I've sideloaded over the years on my Android phones. And in fact, there are a bunch of apps I actively use to this day, which I did not get from the Google Play Store. For example, this screen recorder app and this KWGT widget app, they're both not available on the Google Play Store anymore, but I was able to find APK versions of both of them online and then sideload them no problem. Or this modded version of the Boost for Reddit app or this Hail app that lets me hide system apps or even these alpha testing versions of my own apps, Palette and Shelf, I'm able to install all of them super easily thanks to sideloading. And even though the EU has essentially forced Apple to allow for sideloading, which should be coming into effect sometime later this year, in classic Apple fashion, as mentioned, it looks like it's gonna be incredibly restrictive. In fact, I think you actually need to live in Europe to enable the functionality without some clunky workarounds. And apparently it's also gonna cost developers a pretty penny if they allow their apps to be sideloaded as well. And this means that the feature will be pretty much dead on arrival. But imagine how much fun it would be if Apple allowed for true sideloading app functionality, much like Android does. It's not a deal breaker if they don't, but if they do, I'd be much more tempted to make the switch. Okay, second up, and Apple seriously needs to implement some sort of feature that deals with the issue of spam calls and messages. I've been absolutely surprised at how many more spam calls and messages I've received on my iPhone 15 Pro over the past few weeks alone compared to literally any Android phone I've used over the past year or so. Almost daily, I receive at least one spam call or spam text message, whereas on Android, and particularly the Google Pixel phones, they have way better systems in place for automatically detecting and blocking these sorts of messages and calls completely, meaning I pretty much never see them at all. It's honestly surprising to me just how far behind Apple is in this area. And whilst it's also not a deal breaker, I would love for them to deal with this once and for all. All right, the third change I'd love for Apple to implement is to give us more flexibility over the home screen. Now, whether this is by implementing more home screen customizations natively, like letting us place app icons wherever we want without having to resort to using third-party invisible widget apps, or giving us more grid sizing options, or can you imagine how cool it would be if Apple let us use third-party icon packs natively? I mean, that would be wildly cool. But to be honest, I don't really see Apple implementing those changes specifically. And to be fair, a lot of Android phones don't even offer many of those customizations either. Well, some do, but most don't offer as much flexibility natively as I'd like. But why it doesn't really bother me on Android is because of true interactive widgets. Now, Apple do, of course, have widgets, and they even introduced so-called interactive widgets with iOS 17. However, as of right now, these interactive functions only let you either adjust something related to the widget itself, like skipping forward or back on a music player widget or marking reminders as complete and so on. And they only ever let us open the app that the widget itself is from. On Android, however, I can use an application called KWGT or another one called App Bar to create an entire widget with custom app icons positioned in essentially any configuration I like and tapping on those custom icons will launch any app of my choosing directly. 
Now I can use an app like Widgie on iOS to do the same sort of app configuration thing, which I have on my iPhone 15 Pro. But again, right now, the best I can do in terms of functionality is setting it up so that tapping on an icon first opens the Widgie app, then the app of my choosing. So it kind of works, but geez, how much nicer is it on Android? And to go along with that, the next feature that Apple needs to address for me to consider making the switch full time is their awful app library. Now, I know a lot of iOS users, and in fact, a lot of Android users as well, enjoy having all of their icons on the home screen, but I am not one of those users. I like having a clean home screen reserved for just my main app icons, and then keeping every other app in my app drawer. Now, the app library on iOS is meant to function for this very purpose. However, for some baffling reason, the apps are all sorted automatically into folders. And more often than not, I find myself having to use the search bar up here to actually find the app that I want. When you do go into search mode, you actually get this neat alphabetized app list, which I would actually prefer to be the default app library configuration. However, even then, having the apps listed one by one here, each on their own row, it still takes way too long to sift through this list to find an app I'm looking for, particularly if it starts with a letter towards the end of the alphabet. Whereas pretty much every single Android phone has this almost universal app drawer configuration with five apps next to each other, organized alphabetically, and it just makes it so, so much quicker to find apps that aren't on my home screen. Look, I'd take it if Apple at least opened this apps list with the keyboard by default when swiping into the app library, but I'd love it even more if they sorted apps into rows of four or five for even quicker access. Okay, next up, and how is it 2024 and we still do not have a clipboard on iOS? So for those who don't know what a clipboard is, on Android, let's say I've got a long message drafted out to someone so I don't accidentally send it to them before it's been properly put together. But once I'm finished, I can then select it all and then copy it. And that's obviously no different to how it works on iOS. However, on Android, I can then copy something else. Let's say a link to a YouTube video and check this out. If I then want to send both the message and the YouTube video to someone on WhatsApp, for example, I just open up that conversation, tap this button here, then tap this clipboard icon. And there we go. I can now see everything I've copied right here on my clipboard and paste in both of them right away. Now, by default, items in my clipboard history will be cleared after an hour. However, I can also long press any item to pin it to my clipboard, which will keep it there indefinitely. Oh, and you can also enable a setting that saves recently captured screenshots to your clipboard automatically so that you can quickly share them via keyboard straight away if you like. But yeah, this is a feature I use all the time and absolutely adore whenever I'm using Android. And I seriously wish Apple would get their act together and implement the feature as well. All right, now, before we get to the final two proper deal-breaking features that I need Apple to address for me to seriously consider switching over, I just wanted to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Pulseway, which is a serious game changer for tech professionals like you and me. So in a sometimes outrageously fast-paced world, Pulseway is your trusted IT partner. And it's not just another piece of software, it's a lifeline for anyone who navigates the complex maze of servers, networks, and connected devices. So picture this, you're out and about, perhaps sipping coffee at a cafe, or maybe you're even enjoying a well-deserved holiday, and suddenly an alarm goes off on your phone related to a server back at home or at the office. Now, normally that might make you panic, but with Pulseway, you can respond immediately from their mobile app. And that's the power of remote monitoring and management. With a few taps, you can pinpoint the issue, troubleshoot it, and even fix it without skipping a beat. So if you're serious about staying ahead of IT issues and ensuring that your systems run smoothly whilst also having the freedom to live your life and go wherever your heart so desires, then Pulseway is your answer. Try it free using the first link down in the description below. All right, second to last, and now we are into the full-on deal-breaking features that seriously stop me from switching to iOS, the first of which is the notification system. I've been complaining about this for many, many years at this point, and whilst Apple has made some small improvements over the years, the iOS notification system is still just so much worse compared to Android's. 
For example, I use the Google Calendar app as my default calendar app, which my wife also uses so that we can both stay on top of what's happening on a daily basis. And not too long ago, I'd scheduled what's called a council curbside pickup, where you can essentially put old and unwanted items on your front curb to be collected. And I'd put this as an event into Google Calendar and had set a reminder for the day before to make sure that we remembered to put everything out as needed. So the day before I get the notification in the morning on my iPhone, no problem there. But it's what happens after that point that is the issue. You see, on an Android phone, not only would that notification stay visible on my lock screen indefinitely until I manually dismiss it, but it also shows as a little icon in my status bar, giving me a constant reminder about that event. On an iPhone, even though I have this time sensitive notification toggle set to on, after an hour, that notification gets hidden from the lock screen and is only viewable if I swipe up, which let's be honest, how often does anyone remember to swipe up here to look at past notifications? Maybe you do, but I know I don't. And then because there's also no icon in the status bar reminding me of that calendar notification, I'll be honest, I completely forgot about the curbside pickup event until about 10 o'clock the night before when my wife messaged me asking me what time pickup was the next day. And the council pickup guys ended up collecting the stuff at around 7 a.m. the next morning, but they don't come knocking on the door if you've forgotten to put it out. So if my wife hadn't remembered, then we'd have missed our booking. And honestly, this issue would not have occurred at all if I was using my Android phone. So for Apple to fix this, they essentially need to copy Android's notification system completely by keeping notifications on the lock screen until they're manually dismissed by the user and by showing us unread notification icons in the status bar or maybe even around the dynamic island or something. I don't know, they can be creative with how they do it, but the icons need to be visible at all times until dismissed. Perhaps they can implement a sort of silent notification setting toggle that users can enable. That means selected app notifications can disappear from the lock screen, but by default, notifications should not leave the lock screen unless a user dismisses them. And so the final change that I'd like Apple to make, and this is the biggest one, which is why I saved it for last, but it is implementing a universal back gesture. And I tweeted about this a little while ago where I essentially said that Android's gestural navigation system is so much better than iOS's thanks almost exclusively to its universal back gesture. And I'm sure some of you are getting ready to comment something like, but Sam, you can swipe the left of your screen on an iPhone to go back. And whilst that is the case, sometimes it's definitely not the case all the time. For example, let's say I'm in the Twitter app and I tap on my notifications. If I then want to head back to my feed on an Android phone, I can swipe back on either the right or the left of the screen. And there we go. On my iPhone 15 Pro, swiping in from the left just opens up this side menu. Now, on my Android phone, opening up that side menu requires me to swipe up diagonally, which I'll admit is a little bit clunky, but that back gesture is the thing I'm doing way, way more. So having it prioritized as the universal gesture is key here. Or let's say I'm in Instagram and again, I tap on my notifications, then I head over to my profile, then open up my latest post to check how it's performing. If I then wanna go back through each of those menus, both phones do let me swipe back to get out of the post, but then from there, there's no way to go back on the iPhone. I can sit here swiping left all day long, but nothing will happen. Whereas on my Android phone, I can swipe left, then left again, and as should be the case, it takes me back both times. Or again, in the YouTube app, let's say I wanna watch some shorts, which by the way, I never actually do, but on an Android phone, again, I can swipe to go back to whatever previous page I was on. On the iPhone 15 Pro, I can't swipe in any direction to go back. The only option is to tap the home button. And you might be thinking, yeah, but all of those alternate actions aren't very hard to do, Sam. Well, yes, on their own, they're fine. But given that almost every single app treats this back gesture differently on iOS, and in some cases, it doesn't even work at all, it just makes navigating in and around apps way more clunky, which to be honest, is something I'm pretty surprised Apple hasn't already fixed. Look, I know Google pretty much just blatantly ripped off 90% of Apple's gestural navigation system, but the one part they kept different is the one part that makes it leagues ahead of Apple's. And so Apple, given that Android copied most of your gestures, why don't you just copy the back gesture in return? It would make navigating your phones so, so much better. 
And so there you have it. Those are the seven features and changes that I'd need Apple to implement for me to consider switching over full time. And they've become emphasized and amplified all the more since I switched back to using the iPhone 15 Pro for the last few weeks. Do I see a future where Apple actually implements all of the above changes? No, I don't. And in fact, I can't really see them implementing any of these changes anytime soon, but a man can dream, right? Aside from that, for all the Android users out there, let me know what changes you would need Apple to implement for you to consider switching over. Or if you're already an iPhone user, what would you need Android to implement for you to consider switching over? And don't say iMessage or FaceTime because that's Apple's problem, not Android's. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.